Hi everyone, welcome back to the Vinyl Vault. Just back from uh, the boot sales and I spent about £30 today um, on various different records. Um, generally a pound each, but I did pick up three LPs at 50p each and weirdly enough they were the better condition LPs were the cheapest ones. They were 50p, but I'll show you those shortly. So um, yeah, let me just go through with, uh, with you what I got. So I got a copy of uh, Fireball by Deep Purple. As you can see, this one's got quite a lot of um, wear to the front cover and so on. Um, not quite ring wear, but it is it's starting to be ring wear. But it's, it's it's wear and tear, but not in the not in the shape of the record. Um, this is a gatefold gatefold sleeve. A little bit of a glue come unstuck there. Gatefold sleeve. Um, this one says. Um, if I pronounce it right, Paith Marconi EMI. So this is for a 1971. Uh, I've got a feeling this might be French. Let's just pull out the... So it comes with um, Deep Purple Fireball Lyric Sheet. And yep, it says um, made in France down here in the corner. So. This is a French pressing, so yeah, the label actually looks a little different as well, if I can get that into shot. Slightly different font uh, on this to the usual Harvest. It does say Made in France, just up here under the Harvest wording. And um, yeah, although the cover's worn, the, the record's in really nice condition. So interesting to think these uh, French pressings found their way uh, over here, but uh, many uh, presses from different countries do end up here and, and ours to other countries, as you know. So that's, um, oh, and this is a um, stereo copy up there in the corner. So quite nice condition, nice gatefold sleeve. Then, um, it's a bit of a shame about this, this was a pound, but you do wonder whether to leave it or, or pick it up because of um, when people draw on the covers. So this one's got writing. Um, on the cover uh, and it has ring wear and sellotape as well so um, far from perfect but it's hard to leave a David Bowie Bowie David Bowie LP um, because the condition on the vinyl was not too bad I'd say it was probably a, a VG plus um, RCA Victor Dynaflex label 1972 And I think I think Dynaflex was a, a certain type of vinyl that um, wasn't so uh, rigid. I don't know if that made the records play any better. The fact that they did that, you would assume it does, but uh, I'm not sure. So um, the man who sold the world. Then I found a copy of uh, what's it actually called? What's actually the title? This is Stevie Nicks. Uh, rock a little. It's actually called Rock a Little. Don't see this one um, very much. I might have one copy. 1985. Um, and this one's got uh, a lyric sheet inside, and it's PCS seven three zero zero according to that inner lyric sheet. Not not bad condition. Not perfect. A little bit of wear and tear from uh, you know being in a you know being played over the years Stevie Nicks this is a, a record I was hoping to find for some time but it's quite elusive it's hard to find this is uh, the Tracy Chapman LP um, really don't see it 1988 I guess I was going to say, I guess that's when they sort of started phasing out records, but probably actually more more to the 90s. I think records were still being pressed quite a lot in the late 80s. So correct, correct in a sheet, uh, lyric sheet or picture sleeve. Um, Electra. Yeah, um, I've been hoping to find one, so I eventually got there and for a pound, so that was good. Now this one I picked up. Uh, one of these recently I think but and it, again hard to not sure if you can pick it up on a camera I'll try some of these records when you pick them up are like really dusty this one's really dusty Eric Clapton cream of Eric Clapton 
gatefold sleeve. Uh, 1987, so um, a little bit older than I imagined. ECTV Space One is the catalog number. Um, the inner sleeve on this is um, like a black one, Polydor label. Not sure if the camera's picking that up. Um, yeah, quite nice condition, but it's very dusty, so I need to give that a wipe. Put that one away. What else did we get today? Now I've not found this before and I don't know this. This group is called Little Feet. I've never seen this before. Um, what can I tell you about it? Not a lot. You probably know what it is anyway. Um, okay, so it's on the Warner Brothers label. Little Feet, self-titled album. Uh, what's the year? What is the year? 1975, oh, fairly old. Um, yeah, I've never seen this before. Do any of you like Little Feet? I really can't say much about them. I've, I have never heard of them. I've never heard of them. There's a picture of them. And uh, WEA Warner Brothers catalogue number K46072 in stereo. Let me know about that. I've never heard of them. Now I've heard of these small faces. Um, I haven't picked this up before. This is laminated front sleeve. It's uh, that flip back type, but it's not laminated on the rear. Uh, what year is this? Doesn't say on the cover. Catalogue number is IMSP008. And it's on the Immediate Record Co. Limited. This is uh, 1967. See if I can get that in shot for you. Uh, oh, that was side two. So this is um, side one. This is pretty much mint, it's near mint. And I don't know if you can make it out on the camera. I've heard people talk about it. It's got this KT stamped on the inside part of the um, label. And I've heard people say, uh, not with regard to this one, they talk about the KT tax code. I don't know what that means, but it's obviously KT meant, meant um, I don't know, it's, it's, it, what, I don't know what it meant. But I'm sure you'll tell me, something to do with how much tax you pay or, on the vinyl. So that's small faces. Then, uh, I've never seen this before, but uh, it's Elkie Brooks. I see a fair few Elkie Brooks LPs on my travel, but I've never seen this one. So of course, uh, I wanted to pick this up because I want to have a listen. Um, it's just in a standard paper inner, as you can see through here, A&M label. Um, but yeah, it's, it's not um, an LP that I've seen. So that was a good purchase for me, something new to listen to. Like I haven't got anything to listen to. Uh, Al Alchemy, Dire Straits Live, Gatefold LP. Uh, Vertigo label, also available on chrome cassette and video cassette in stereo, VHS or Betamax, how about that, 1984, that's really quite nice, that's a double, double LP, um, can you see that, that's in a, oh, that's upside down, um, that's on a, a black inner, with a big black arrow on it, And then uh, again, black inner. So uh, yeah, that's that's really nice condition. That's definitely a VG, VG plus, if not better condition. Then uh, I think I've seen this before, but I don't think I've picked this up before. This is 10cc live and let live. Um, is that live and let live or live and let live? Live and let live. Live and let live. There you go. Got there in the end. Uh, WH Smith's price sticker on it. That was originally 
£5.50 and it is really heavy. Laminated front, gatefold, laminated rear and uh, this is the label Mercury 10cc 1977 so there's two L, it's probably both that was two L, two LPs in there then a copy of Genesis seconds out this one's very heavy so this is a again this is a double LP very heavy gatefold sleeve laminated front back inner outer edges and GE2001 is a catalogue number on the Charisma label and um, what's it look like? It's labels look like that. I'm sure you all know, I'm sure you've all got copies of this. Seconds out. 1977 Genesis. So a nice interesting mixed bag of bits and pieces today. This one I've never seen before. Um, Bethnal, 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 Dangerous Times. Do you know that? that? What do they look like? They look, they look a bit punky. Um, Vertigo label. They they look potentially sort of rocky, maybe punky. I don't know. I don't know anything about them to be honest. This is the label. 1978. Side two. Side one. So and that's actually got a cut. That's got a cut corner there. So I don't know if that was a sale or return. Um, but this is this is a British LP by the looks of it, with a cut corner. O often the cut corners are US cutouts. But uh, anyway, let me know what type of music they are. Now this uh, this I didn't expect to see. There's two LPs in here. Two now LPs. Now I only really ever see these on CD. I didn't know they went up to this number and we're still making vinyl. This is now 21. What year is this? This is 1992. So this is this is definitely around a period when vinyl was being phased out by the record companies. Um, I believe, not because people didn't want it, because it was just, there was far more profit to be made in selling us CDs. So um, yeah, vinyl was getting phased out. Uh, what can I tell you about this? This is a compilation and as I say, I didn't realise these it went this into vinyl this high up. So um gatefold, have I said that? Don't know, loss of lot. Um now twenty one. Um so who's on there? Queen, wet wet wet, Shakespeare's sister, Temptation, Simply Red, Madness, Genesis, Julia Fordham, don't know who she is, Crowded House, Right said Fred, Mr. Big, Everything But the Girl, Rock Set, Brian May, The Wonder Stuff, Jesus and the Mary Chain, James, Curtis Stigerty, and so many, many more. Um now 21. I've never seen it on vinyl before. And this was also of the same person. This is now 23. So I don't know what number they stopped doing vinyl, but that's what I call music. Uh, now 23 again. Gatefold sleeve. Laminated inner and outer. EMI. What year is this one? Uh, 92. Same year. So it must have come out the same year. Um, who's on this one? Tasman Archer. Charles and Eddie, Bob Marley and the Wailers, George Michael, who else? Simply Red, Bizarre Inc, The Shaman, Rock Set, Genesis. Um, yeah, I didn't realise that these came out on vinyl. Um, I thought it was long, long stopped uh, pressing vinyl um, for those albums. Right, now here's the ones I paid 50p for, and these are the probably the best condition ones in here. Three Toyer albums, all in like pretty much near mint condition and these were 50p each I mean I just how can how can someone sell it I mean you know pounds cheap but then they sell you this person sold me these for 50p each and it's just it's just heaven 50p each it makes it all worthwhile getting them for that price so there was that one then this Toya Anthem again um, it's hard to make out on camera but it's really like crispy you know, corners, not hardly any dinks. Well, there's a very slight dink down in this corner, very slight. But this was 50 pence. Um, can you see that? 
So absolutely, that's quite heavy. I wonder if there's anything in there. There is something additional in here. Bear with me, folks. There's something in here. Oh, so there's like, I've never seen this before. This is, this is like a toy fan club. Um, I don't know what you call it. It's, um, they're all dressed up as mummies. Anyway, that was 50p, so um, absolute bargain. And then there was one last toy LP that was 50p. Again, really nice condition. Um, what's that say, so the Changeling? Again, Safari label. Who's Safari? What company? Safari Records, part of Warner's, I think. So that's, um, again, really nice condition. This one feels a bit heavy as well. So this has got, um, like, oh, it's got various things in it. It's got a, it's got a discography, sheet music, toy sheet music, and like a circuit board type in uh, printed sheet. So those three were 50p each, which was a bargain. And now we're back to pound stuff. Um, Rock of the Westies, Elton John. Again, this is really nice condition, but this was uh, one pound. Um, 1975, this is really quite heavy, exceptionally heavy, what's in here. So we've got, that's really heavy. It's, it's one LP, but there is a, like a lyric in a sheet. That's exceptionally heavy. Let me just see why that is so heavy. Oh, just, I think it is just the way, it's just the way the vinyl is pressed, just a thick piece of vinyl. So that was Elton John. Now this I don't know. Um, slight, slight, that has been damp at some point in the past. Slight ripple in that cover. This is John Kale Guts. I have no idea what this is. <laughs> That's quite funny. He's playing the guitar there. When you turn it, it looks like he's fallen over on stage. Island Records. Um, I don't know anything about this. Yeah, the inner sleeve's got a slight ripple in it as well. So I think this has got damp at some point. But um, anyway, John Cow, don't know about well, anything about him. Uh, this that I know about this is Alison Moyer. I picked a few of these up this year. Um, you know, they're, they're cheap, so I pick it up, but I, I just need to check my own master copy and see if it's as, if the vinyl is as good as this one. The very, very common LP. Must have made lots of money selling that. Um, this I have never seen before. This, the two sides of Gene Chandler. This one's still in shrink wrap. Brunswick, so sort of a budget label. Cut corner, US pressing. Um, from New York and I've never seen this before and it's in the Brunswick inner sleeve so I look forward to playing that one then uh, burning the whalers gatefold sleeve oh this might be stuck together bear with me that is stuck I don't want to rip that actually that has not been can you hear that that's not been opened in years. Um, gatefold. Um, yeah, that has not been opened in a long, long time. Uh, Ireland EMI, part of 1973 Ireland. <coughs> black, black inner sleeve. Yeah, Ireland is the right record. <laughs> Ireland label. And uh, not bad condition. Uh, another one I've never seen before, but it looked interesting. Um, it's laminated on the front, not laminated on the back, flip back edges, made by Garrett and Lofthouse. James Carr, you've got my mind messed up. Don't know this. Um, looks like a soul LP. Um, on a stateside label, let me show you what that looks like. Um, SL10205, James Carr, EMI. 1967, so fairly old. 
I think that's probably, I assume that's like a soul album, but I'll give it a spin and find out if that is soul. I'm not sure what else it could be, but I don't know. Um, I was going to say blues, but it looks solely. Um, again, this is another one I've never seen before. Um, Low, Lowell George. Thanks, I'll eat it here. Looks like he's in his dressing gown. Uh, no, nothing about this. I don't know if you can see that. See that dust? Look at that, look. These records have been sitting in someone's loft. This is from 1979. Got a cutout. And... Yeah, Warner Brothers, that's the label. Yeah, don't know anything about him. Interestingly though, look down here, especially, can you get that in focus? Come on camera. See if we can get that in focus. Specially imported by OPR 10P. Don't know what that means. Interesting though. Then, Legend, the best of Bob Marley and the Whalers. Turns out quite a lot this. Gate pole sleeve. Uh, 1984, Ireland Records. Uh, hold on a minute. I'm not sure if that's the right LP. This is legend. This this actually might be the wrong LP. Uh, it says Bob Marley in a way is Natty Dread. 1974. I think that someone's got, put that in the wrong sleeve. So I don't think that is that album. I didn't notice that earlier. Right. <coughs> This one is a Trojan reggae LP called Red Red Wine. Um, it's a bit grubby. Um, mono TTL2, whatever that means. Down, a downtown production. Neasden Lane, London. If I can get this out, it's quite stuck in here. Oh yeah, I recognise this label. This I had a 45 on this label recently. This is the downtown label, red, red wine, various artists. So, um, it says Trojan on it, although the label's downtown, so it's slightly odd, but uh, a reggae LP, I believe. And then we have 10cc greatest hits. Again, this one turns up quite a lot. Printed in a sleeve. Uh, what's the year on this? No, it's 79. 10 cc. So I think I spent around about 30 pounds. I haven't actually counted the records. I think it was about 30 quid. And um, yeah, there's quite a mixed bag in it, but quite some quite nice records. If I was to pull out one that I'm excited about, I suppose, what must I just have a quick glance? Uh, Tracy Chapman, pleased to have found that. Steve Nicks, Stevie Nicks, pleased to have found that as well. And then obviously there's the Now albums, which I didn't know went up that, that far in number on vinyl. But uh, anyway, there you go. Uh, thanks for watching, see you all soon.